okay so hello friends uh, in today's video uh, we are going to calculate that uh, what is the electrostatic pressure felt by a charge conductor on its surface okay so this is the our conductor that has a some surface charge density sigma let's say which has some positive charge spread on its surface and uh, as we know that there could be no charge inside a conductor such if there is any charge on a conductor that can be only on its surface and let's say the surface charge density of this conductor is sigma so in this video we are going to calculate uh, the what is the electrostatic pressure on the surface of this charge conductor before calculating the electrostatic pressure we need to calculate one important thing that is what is the electric field just outside the surface of this conductor so suppose this uh, this is our conductor and i want to see what is the electric field just outside this conductor let's say suppose this point so it is already known from the property of the conductor that the electric field could only lie in the direction normal to the surface that is uh, the direction of the electric field is will be something like that which is normal to the surface outward the question is what is the magnitude of it let's say e what's that equal to of course we know the direction is in the uh, outward direction normal to the surface what's the value of e but okay so to find out this thing let me do one small uh, calculation that uh, i take a let's say gaussian surface or let's say gaussian pill box on the uh, surface of this conductor uh, like this okay so let's say this is uh, I'm traveling this boundary in this direction from my my left to right direction. Now, if I want to apply the Gauss law on this Gaussian pill box, so I have taken a Gaussian pill box. This is a Gaussian pill box, okay, and I'm going to apply the Gauss law on Gaussian pill box. So what do I see here that the electric field now what is the Gauss law Gauss law is E dot ds is equal to Q enclosed divided by the epsilon naught. Now this surface has four parts let's say this is one this is two this is three and four. So what is the contribution to this integral E dot ds by the first part by this a to B part of the Gaussian pill box. This contribution to this A B part to this integral is actually zero because because of the simple reason that the electric field inside the conductor is precisely zero. And uh, similarly, the contribution of the B C and A D part are, are also zero because uh, electric field is parallel to the uh, direction of a d and b c okay. the only non-zero contribution comes from the uh, surface three right where it is electric field is perpendicular to this so that e dot ds because ds is the area element which is always per uh, along the perpendicular uh, direction of the surface so e and ds become in the same direction here in this direction ds and ds only this third portion of the surface gives you non-zero contribution to this integral which is equal to e times the area this uh, area of this portion let's say this is a for example and this is q and, and closed by epsilon naught so electric field now turns out to be q and closed upon area one one of us this conductor has this uniform surface charge density sigma then q and closed over area is nothing but the surface charge density sigma so e the value of e just outside the conductor is nothing but e equal to sigma over epsilon now okay this is the first thing that we have calculated in the direction of calculating the electrostatic pressure felt by the charge conductor now let's consider a little bit different scenario okay suppose i have a charge sheet conducting charge sheet okay so this is a conducting charge sheet 
two dimensional uh, sheet and again it is having the uh, surface charge density let's say sigma okay so now suppose if i want to calculate that what is the electric field just above the surface of this charge sheet and just below the surface of this charge sheet for that i am going to take again a gaussian pull box of the same kind which i taken earlier a b c d now the contribution comes non-zero contribution to this integral e dot ds is equal to q and closed by epsilon naught comes from two parts the c d part and a b part because uh, now the surface of this charge sheet uh, it has an open end because two dimensional uh, charge sheet and uh, it has two uh, surfaces open now the flux can go out like this and can go out like this so two part of this uh, integration along a b and c d will give you non-zero contribution and that's why this time we'll have e times twice of let's say again the area is a uh, twice of a and q and close by epsilon naught which means that e is actually q and close by 2a epsilon naught will be sigma upon 2 epsilon naught now wait a minute what is this electric field and where it is so electric field that is suppose i ask what is the electric field here just just above this charge sheet at this point suppose just above this charge sheet so that electric field is will be perpendicularly outward because it's a conducting sheet okay that will be the direction okay let me call this e above and what will this magnitude sigma upon 2 epsilon naught and how about the electric field just below the surface it will be in the opposite direction right it will be in the opposite direction and the that um, let me call this e below and this will be again sigma upon 2 epsilon naught but in the reverse direction okay so that is the case with a charge two dimensional charge sheet but suppose it uh, instead of taking this two dimensional charge sheet this uh, flat surface that we have taken we can utilize this uh, uh, result that we have just calculated e above and below in case of the conductor that we have already in our original problem for which we have to calculate the electrostatic pressure like what suppose i take the same conductor this is my conductor and uh, now on the surface of this conductor i take a infinitesimally small patch of it like suppose i consider this small patch of it and i uh, take again this uh, gaussian surface a gaussian pill box on this uh, a very small tiny portion of the surface it is so small that although the surface of the conductor is not flat this is our conductor the surface of the conductor is not flat but since we have taken our patch to be infinitesimally small so this very small tiny portion tiny uh, is patch is considered to be, can be considered to be nearly flat because it is very small in size very tiny in size now the, this situation is a little bit different to this particular situation that we have just covered. In that case, that charge sheet was a two-dimensional charge sheet. There was nothing uh, inside uh, below the surface and all. Here, you see, it's a conductor. So, electric field inside a conductor cannot be non-zero. But according to this calculation, if I calculate for this patch, for example, E is here just outside these patches sigma upon to epsilon naught and just inside the patches minus sigma over to epsilon naught but now we have the so we have the conductor bulk of the conductor inside this is the bulk of the conductor so no electric field can uh, be inside the bulk of the conductor it has to be zero so it means what that the electric field which we have considered due to this patch here that is inside the character was minus sigma upon to epsilon naught so we have to uh, it means we have to add sigma upon to epsilon naught to make it zero that is in that indirectly tells us 
that the electric field due to the rest of the conductor due to the rest of the conductor this portion of the conductor is precisely plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught inside the conductor and same will be just outside the conductor sigma over 2 epsilon naught because we have just calculated that the electric field just outside the surface of the conductor is for a charge for a charge conductor which has a surface charge that is sigma is sigma over epsilon naught precisely and now by the calculation of this result if i take the small patch on the surface of the conductor it is showing me the electric field just outside the patch is sigma over 2 epsilon naught and inside is minus 2 sigma epsilon naught but that cannot be the case because now we have a conductor bulk of the conductor below the uh, patch so it has to be zero that tells you directly that the electric field due to the rest part rest part means apart from the patch is positive sigma over 2 epsilon naught inside the conductor and as well as outside the conductor because the sigma to uh, upon to epsilon naught plus sigma to upon epsilon naught gives you precise value as sigma over epsilon naught which is which should be the case so it means uh, the electric field just outside the patch due to rest of the conducting surface is equal to and same is true for the inside of the conductor as well okay so uh, it's an important result uh, that we draw from it okay now what was our aim our aim was to find out the electrostatic pressure uh, on the surface of the conductor what is the force on the surface of this conductor let's say consider this small patch again then the charge which is on uh, on the patch itself that cannot apply a force on it the electric field due to that charge which is present on the patch itself cannot apply a force on itself so uh, if you want to calculate really what is the force on this small patch area that we have taken here hmm, that has to be due to the electric field because of the rest of the conductor apart from this patch and which we have calculated as let me write down as e rest as sigma over 2 epsilon naught. So what is the force due to this uh, 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 sigma over 2 epsilon naught due to this elect uh, electric field which is caused by the rest of the conductor on this patch? That is force is equal to force is equal to charge times electric field, right? Let me know. Now the force we have to calculate let's say is F and charge is on the on this patch. What is the charge? Sigma is this charge density, let's say the area of the patch is A and electric field is now the electric field is the electric field which is because of the rest of the conductor because it cannot uh, the electric field due to this patch itself cannot apply the force on itself right makes no sense so we have to consider the electric field due to the rest of the conductor which we have calculated as e rest so force upon area will become be sigma into e rest and e rest is we have just calculated as sigma over 2 epsilon naught so this comes out to be sigma square upon 2 epsilon naught and f upon a the force per unit area is nothing but the pressure so this is the amount of electrostatic pressure electrostatic pressure that's the surface of the conductor uh, will feel okay so uh, if you take any uh, point here let's say uh, uh, you take any area of the surface the same amount of electrostatic pressure will be felt see if see if sigma is the uniform charge density sigma square point of which can have which can be written in an alternative uh, form as because we have already calculated the electric field the net electric field just outside the surface of the conductor is sigma over epsilon naught so i can actually replace this sigma as e over Eps, uh, e times epsilon naught in this expression here so p is equal to e square upon epsilon naught square upon 2 epsilon naught which means half of epsilon naught e square so electrostatic pressure can also be written as half of epsilon naught 
t square, which is again a very important formula or very important expression for this pressure, which is interestingly uh, is same as the energy stored per unit volume in the electrostatic field. This is the uh, expression that we want to find out for the H, uh, for a charge conductor that what is the electrostatic pressure felt by the surface of the charge so this is the amount of the pressure that the surface of the conductor will feel, charge conductor will feel what is the direction of this pressure it is generally outward it, it is outward so it uh, it can cause the surface of the conductor to expand a little bit okay the best example could be let's say charge uh, soap surfaces that's why because of this pressure the burst actually when they try to expand because of this extra steady pressure you imagine a soap bubble and it has it is a charged soap bubble at the surface is charged so this electrostatic pressure is outside because of the charge present in the surface of the bubble unless i suppose it can uh, want to expand so because of that pressure it may burst okay so that's the uh, relation that we wanted to operate i hope you liked the video thank you so much